Uh, welcome back to Gold Derby. I'm Christopher Rosen. I'm so pleased to be joined by Jemima Kirk, who plays Melissa, a celebrated celebrated writer on the Hulu series Conversations with Friends. Uh, Jemima, congratulations on the performance. I think you're so good on the show. What was it about Melissa that like sparked you that made you want to like kind of take this role? Um, well, it was it. It was more that she was this this well-rounded person, you know, a, a well-rounded person. I don't mean like a great in life. I mean as a character, she was someone. Who, she was someone who uh, was different things at different times, you know, and and that's not an easy thing to play all the time to play such a realistic character, and it's not often that I get offered those kinds of roles. Um, so yeah, there was that. And then there was also the challenge of painting essentially a blank canvas. When I say that, I mean, the context of the, of the story is set in a somewhat, um, you know, beige set, beige storyline, you know, it's nothing happens, you know, everyday things happen. People go on holiday, they sleep together, an affair is even somewhat everyday. But but everything that happened happened between you know uh, sharing a meal or or you know walking down a street to home you know um, so the details and the attention to performance was is so was so um, acute that I was excited to play it. Yeah, I think that comes across really well. The other thing I find interesting, obviously, the show is like told from Francis's perspective and to an extent Nick so you have Melissa technically is positioned likely as like an obstacle but she's not obviously and I think you play her really empathetically but I mean does that knowing how the show is knowing that that's the POV of the show I guess does that how does that affect your performance then and how you're playing her oh that I'm sort of like I'm the the, the wrench and everything the right well, you could be, right yeah. I don't I, yeah, I, I yeah, no I am I don't take that as I don't find that is that was my role was to be the thing Without me, there wouldn't, it's arguable, there'd even be a relationship, you know? Um, and uh, I think my presence adds to the Romeo and Juliet aspect of it, of it all. Um, uh, it was fine. I mean, I love playing, I, th that's a key role to play. I don't mind it being a, the size of a role is never important to me um, if there's something juicy to do you know and there was plenty you mentioned like how uh, like like the intimacy of the show and like the relationships of the cast I feel like is obviously really key in those everyday moments that you're just kind of like that's what the show is and it's like yeah. so uh, obviously you it seems like you guys all get along even though there's conflict within the show I mean like the the, the it's called conversations with friends and it does feel like this is like a friendly group I guess how did you guys was that just like blind luck or how did you guys get affect that on you know, set it and seems like, like that you know via like like interviews and camera stuff like uh, you know press stuff yeah um you know i would say it may i i, I usually try not to get too close to co-stars while we're working just because it can it i, I get concerned that it will cloud what i'm trying how i'm trying to perceive them you know and um but actually, this really helped because it helped to get to um, to complicate the relationship. If I really like Bobby or I really like, you know, and I like Sasha, if I really like Allison, um, then we've got and I then I, I don't have to ignore that with this particular story because it, it works, you know, and, and um, if I'm really and having, a, you know, a, a personal relationship with with Joe is really works, you know, especially one of, of fond, fondness. So um, I we it, it's it's a it's a thing that made it's an aspect of shooting this that made it a total pleasure and easier. Yeah, one of the scenes I love you do, like I said you do have like a lot of great stuff, especially in the in the back end of the, the series. I love the scene where. Uh, Melissa or I guess Melissa and Francis are on the phone together and like uh, it's just a great moment and you have this incredible so obviously like about the affair and and Francis comes in really hot and then you're kind of like rightfully bad <laughs> at your character <laughs> and then you have this great moment where you kind of like just 
she's having like a little bit of a meltdown and you pull the phone away and you just like take a breath. And I was, it just stunned me because I was like, I cannot believe how unexpected that was. And just to, watching you, you have to play her being like, oh shit, I can't believe I have to like now be empathetic to this person who is like cheated, um, who's been, uh, you know, I just yeah. thought that scene is so great. I, can you talk a little about that moment and like yeah, go, doing that scene? Cause like I said, I just think, I thought it was so wonderful. And I think your performance is like incredible in that part. Thank you. I, I, well, the, um, I think that part is, is, you know, I read this quote once by Cheryl Strayed where she said, have the, something like have the bravery to break your own heart. And I think when she, I think by her allowing the affair, she's, she does it all over the place. She breaks her own heart by allowing the affair. She breaks her own heart when she decides to be kind to Francis, when she decides to try to look at Francis as, as uh, someone who can enhance her marriage rather than, than sabotage it. Um, she does all these things to sort of um, uh, undermine her own, her own emotions, you know? And that moment was, uh, was one of those. And it was a, took a huge, I think, I would think a huge amount of strength to, to suddenly go into the maternal role. Um, but it makes a lot of sense that she would because she's already in the maternal role. I mean, with Nick, I mean, that phone call alone is so kind of deranged because it's, she's, she's talking about him like he's a child, right? She's like, how could you hurt my, I mean, that's the kind of phone call angry mothers make to the school or to another bully's parent, you know, like you hurt him and now he's struggling again. He was always struggling, you know, or he's depressed because of you. It, it's, it's kind of almost emasculating as well to, to what she's doing with protecting him in this way, um, but never talking about herself. Um, and I think that's by design because she doesn't want to give a fucking thing to Francis. Right. To get to she doesn't want it. I mean, she does explain to her that, you know, you made me feel embarrassed, blah, blah, blah. But then I don't care anymore about that. Um, so. So, yeah, I think she the maternal thing she does is a, is a, is a, a, an asset for her and her weakness. Was well, that something? And is that in the script? Like when you pull the phone away or did you no, actually do that? No, I did. <laughs> That's awesome. That's so good. How did you because like it was like diving under the water, you know? It was like a moment where I was like, oh my God, okay, I'm going to do this. <laughs> That's incredible. And are you like, when you guys are shooting that, is then Allison on the phone with you? Like, how did you do that on your side, I guess? Well, she was behind, she was in like a screen behind me, you know, or, or behind the camera rather. And that's not, that's also something that this, this set does that I haven't really seen before on other sets. They'll, most of the time they'll give the other actor the day off, which is so strange because it's a scene with another person it's so weird but i think because i still have to go off of their response i have still have to respond to the way they're saying something and if she tries to throw in an ad lib i'm gonna have to respond to that we can't rely on making this scene good just via adr you know it's expensive and it's it's gonna be it's just why not make it simpler and bring the fucking actor in? Sorry, I don't know if you. Can no, that's it. fine. That's totally oh, fine. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. Um, so yeah, and so having her there was everything, and I was there for her phone side of the phone call too. And there was one moment uh, where she was doing, she was, I forget the lines, but I started just sobbing while we were reading the lines and I was behind, you know, I was sitting off camera, like sitting on a couch, looking at the script on the floor, right. And reading it. And I just start, it just moved me so much. And I was speaking through the crying. And then I, and then I realized that Lenny was watching me. And that's like, he, and that's not to say that I was, you know, I was overshadowing at all. It's to say that he was, pay, he's always paying attention to the whole thing. Right. Because watching he needed to see that to decide where he wanted this to go. He's like, oh, that's happening. I didn't realize I didn't read that in the scene. You know, maybe maybe that it influences his directing to know what the other person is going to do or feels inclined to do. Um, and that's something Lenny did a lot. Lenny often would not watch the monitor, but watch us, which wow. is I've never seen. 
<laughs> that's awesome though because i mean yeah. then you're getting like i guess he's getting like the real you know it's not yeah, there's, there's he's no, like nothing this. between him and he's like this he's like <laughs> i mean it's not it's only distracting because i'm like that's so amazing that you're actually treating this like a play you know like he's like okay the camera works good we've got we've got the we've got the shot we like now i'm gonna pay attention here it was great that's awesome when you're playing uh a character like this i mean do you I, I like I know like when people play like characters they're like oh I try to empathize or I try to like understand their perspective and stuff even if I don't agree with it I imagine is that how you're kind of coming at this as well because like you said like some even as a viewer I'm like what Melissa what are you what are you doing here just like, I know no, no, I <laughs> like, no I I don't I don't try to understand I think it's not I think it's important to relate to your character but I don't think it's it's important to relate to them on the on the their principles or their um, or their their choices. You don't have to di- make a direct connection. Like you know, there, there was a question asked last night uh, at a panel, which was uh, to Joe about uh, if he's dating a celebrity in real life and he's playing someone who dates a celebrity in real life, and does his sort of relationship to that help him with his performance? And and that's a perfect example where uh no it doesn't you don't need to take those make those kinds of connections oh she's having a baby i had a baby no and it goes into the like her choosing to uh allow the affair i didn't have to agree with that to understand it because i've done things that are as self-sabotaging as that right that's all i had to tap into yeah no that makes sense yeah. Uh, Bra- I just want to ask Brawley here, like uh, this past spring, I think was the 10th anniversary of girls. I don't want to ask about girls specifically, but I want to like for you as a performer, obviously for a lot of people, I think that was like, I know you were in Tiny Furniture stuff, but that was like their first experience of you as an actor. How do you feel like you've evolved as an actor in the last decade since girls? I can't believe it's been 10 years, but also like it does feel like 10 <laughs> years, I guess for you. I mean, uh, how do you feel like you've turned around, like your performances have been, in, like, what has that been like? Yeah. For you? Uh, embarrassing, <laughs> only because, only because, uh, you know, it was the very beginnings of my career and it's, it's all on camera. <laughs> and I, you know, I didn't, I didn't really take classes then. I'd never really done anything before. So everything that I was learning, you, you know, I was learning through mistakes, things that I wouldn't have made I choices. I did made choices I wouldn't make today, and that's the same thing. You know, if I had to do the role again, um, that goes for any actor. You know, you look at the. It's like any job, except we're on camera, so it's not like any job. I am not saying that. Please don't put that. <laughs> I know. I know like what you mean. any job in the sense that you will make mistakes that you will pay for, you know, they're going to be, and they're going to be there. It's like a writer, you write a piece that now you hate, but it's on the internet forever. You know, I, I certainly have many of those, I'm sure. And yeah. I've been this for very long so as an actor, I've evolved but in, in, in general ways, it, but really just in the sense that um, I, there are things I, I just choose, make different choices. Right. Now. And then based on this, like, it sounds like you had a really great experience as an actor on this show. And, and certainly, like, I could see that in your performance. It's, it's incredibly good. Do you, like, is does this going forward then? Are you like, oh, that was such a great experience. I want to try to find similar things like that. Or how does that work, I guess? No, no, it doesn't. It, 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 I, I don't, you know, jobs for me, at least, are so, it, when it rains, it pours. And they're, f- they're, f- they're sort of few and far between. They come, they, you know, I'll get like a chunk and then nothing, you know? So I'm just curious about what the next thing that comes my way is going to be, but I'm not, I'm not designing it, you know? Right. Um, I'll design it by when I see it, you know, when I see the script, I'll say, eh, that, I can make this work or I'll say, no, nah, I don't like the look of this. It's, it's, <laughs> just, it's just on the fly. Yeah, that's that's great. And this is, like I said, this is a great performance. I love your work. Jemima Kirk plays you. Melissa on Conversations with Friends. You can watch all the episodes on Hulu. Thank you for doing this. Thank you.